Dan and Ephraim and the 144,000 Israelites in the book of Revelation. One of the great mysteries of the book of Revelation is why Dan is not mentioned among the 144,000 sealed Israelites. These 144,000 Israelites are going to be sealed and protected before the start of the Great Tribulation. And we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 7. We quote, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Naphtali, or Naphtali were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Number one, popular theories. There are two popular theories on why Dan is not mentioned in the book of Revelation. The first theory says that it is simply because of the, a mistake made by someone copying the Bible and that Dan originally was among the 144,000. But one reason why this theory is incorrect is because God is in control of his work, the Bible. God would not let such an error slip into his word. If Dan is missing among the 144,000, it is because Dan indeed is missing from the 144,000 and not due to some uh, human mistake. The other theory says that the reason why Dan is missing among the 144,000 is because the Antichrist is going to be of the tribe of Dan and that the tribe of Dan is going to follow the Antichrist. But one reason why this theory is incorrect is because Dan is not the only tribe whose name is missing among the 144,000, because Ephraim's name is also missing among the 144,000. And this theory does not answer this mystery about Ephraim's missing name. So the, the Antichrist may or may not be of the tribe of Dan, but the reason why Dan's name is missing among the 144,000 is not because of the Antichrist. Number two, Dan is in Revelation, but is not mentioned by name. The reader of the Bible will probably have noticed that there are themes that appear both in the beginning of the Bible and in the end of the Bible. For example, in Genesis chapters 2 to 3, we read about how man lived in the sinless Garden of Eden and how that paradise was lost. And then in the end of the Bible, in Revelation chapters 21 to 22, we read about how that uh, paradise is going to be restored and how that man is again going to live in harmony with God. And this is because the Bible is written in a chiasm. A chiasm is a literary structure that divides the text into two halves which are mirrored images of each other. For example, if we first write um, ABC with capital letters and then with the small letters, we write uh, CBA, then we have a mirrored image, and that would be a chiasm. By looking at the chiastic structure of the Bible, we can get a clue about why Dan is not mentioned in the book of Revelation. 
Of the 12 patriarchs, the sons of uh, Jacob, whose name was turned into Israel, the first one was Reuben, and Dan was only number five. And yet, the first of the 12 patriarchs to be mentioned by name in the Bible is Dan. We read in uh, Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, quote, And when Abraham heard that his brother, that would be Lot, and when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Unquote. Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. And here Dan, or the name of Dan, is mentioned three generations before Dan was even born, even before his grandfather Isaac was born. Obviously, what must have happened is that uh, when someone copied uh, the Bible, there was another name here, another place name there, and uh, to make sure that the reader of the Bible would understand what place it was referring to, that uh, copyist changed uh, that uh, place name into Dan. But that would be with the God's approval. It was God who put the name of Dan there, just like it was God who said that Dan's name should not be in the book of Revelation. In other words, in the beginning of the Bible, the name of Dan is there, but Dan himself is not there. So by using the chiastic structure of the Bible, we can therefore deduct that the mirrored image will appear in the end of the Bible. So in other words, in the beginning of the Bible, the name of Dan is there, but Dan himself is not there. So in the end of the Bible, the name of Dan is not there, but Dan himself is there. So in other words, Dan is present in Revelation, but his name is, is missing. Samson the Danite is mentioned by Samuel, but is not mentioned by name. In the book of 1 Samuel, we find a confirmation that the name of Dan is missing, but Dan is actually there. When Saul had become king, the prophet Samuel made a speech to all Israel, where he mentions uh, four of the greatest of the judges. We quote from the book of 1 Samuel. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you dwelt safe." Unquote. From 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 11. Now, three of these judges, Jerubbabel and Jephthah and Samuel himself, uh, we, we know who they are, but then Samuel mentions a fourth judge, judge called Bedan, and nowhere in the Bible do, do we hear anything about a judge called Bedan. So Samuel mentions four of the greatest of the judges, and yet one of them is uh, someone called Bedan, uh, who is not mentioned anywhere, at least by that name. Now, obviously, one of the greatest, maybe the greatest of the judges, was uh, Samson of the tribe of Dan. So it is no doubt referring to Samson. And we find a confirmation of that in um, the epistle uh, to the Hebrews in the New Testament. Uh, that uh, chapter is also known as the Bible's Hall of Faith, which mentions five judges. That's uh, Jerubbabel and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and Samuel. So to return to the book of 1 Samuel, Bedan, that must obviously refer to Samson. So Bedan, no doubt, uh, is a corruption of the Hebrew Ben Dan, which uh, means the son of Dan, and would be an obvious reference to Samson. But the point is that uh, in uh, the book of 1 Samuel, the name of uh, that Danite is not mentioned, but that Danite is there. So the name of Samson, Samson is not mentioned, but Samson is there. So likewise in Revelation, the name of Dan is not mentioned, but Dan is there. Number three, Manasseh takes Dan's place among the 144,000. If you compare the order in which the 12 tribes are mentioned in Revelation chapter 7 
to the order in which the twelve tribes and the twelve patriarchs are mentioned in the Old Testament, you will find that in Revelation chapter 7, Dan's place has been given to Manasseh. Now, in the Old Testament, when the twelve tribes of Israel and the twelve patriarchs are mentioned, Dan is either uh, listed among the three other sons of the concubines, that would be Naphtali, Asher, and Gad. We see that in Genesis chapters 29 to 30, Genesis chapter 49, Numbers chapter 1, Numbers chapter 2, Deuteronomy chapter 27, Deuteronomy chapter 33, and in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 1 to 29. Or Dan is listed among the two sons of Rachel, that is Rachel's actual sons, Joseph and Benjamin, and that would be in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, and in Ezekiel chapter 48, verses 32 to 35. Or uh, the, uh, Dan is not mentioned at all, and we find that in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 3 to chapter 7, verse 40. In Revelation chapter 7, the 12 tribes are mentioned in the following order. Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. Now, Dan's name should be next to Gad, Asher, and Naphtali, but it has been given to Manasseh. Now, Manasseh and Ephraim were the two sons of Joseph, and in the Old Testament, Ephraim and Manasseh are almost always mentioned next to each other. The question is then, why has Dan's name been given to Manasseh? And the question could also be asked, why has Dan's name been given to Manasseh and not to Ephraim? And the question could also be asked, why is Manasseh's name listed among the 144,000 but Ephraim's name is not mentioned among the 144,000. And then the final question could then be asked, why are both Dan's name and Ephraim's name not mentioned among the 144,000? Number four. The two witnesses of Dan and Ephraim in Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 11, we read about two witnesses or prophets whom God is going to raise up during the Great Tribulation. We read in Revelation chapter 11. And I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they are the people, and kindreds, and tongues, and nations, shall see their dead bodies three days and a an half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and the enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. 
and the remnant were frighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Unquote. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 to 13. These two witnesses have the characteristics of Moses, Elijah, and John the Baptist. They have the characteristics of Moses because they smite the earth with uh, a new version of the ten plagues of ancient Egypt, just like Moses did. And also, like Moses, they start leading the 144,000 Israelites, as well as the great multitude of all nations and uh, races and languages and so forth. They lead all them out of spiritual Egypt, just like Moses led the ancient Israelites out of Egypt of old. They are similar to Elijah because they have power to shut heaven that it rain not, just like Elijah. And also like Elijah, they are going to be taken up into heaven in a cloud. Now according to Malachi chapter 3 and 4, before or just before the Messiah comes, God is going to send a prophet in the power and spirit of Elijah. So these two prophets are going to be the two final great prophets before the second coming of Christ. They are also going to be similar to John the Baptist because John the, John the Baptist was the first fulfillment of that prophecy of, Eli, uh, of uh, Malachi because just before the first coming of Christ, John the Baptist appeared. And just like John the Baptist came just before the first coming of Christ, just before the second coming of Christ, the two witnesses are going to appear. And also, like John the Baptist was uh, killed, the two witnesses are going to be killed. So who are these two witnesses? One of the witnesses is going to be of the tribe of Dan, and the other witness is going to be of the tribe of Ephraim. Now, in case you are wondering where we are filming this, it is uh, at the uh, Eskom Monastery in northern Zealand, north of Copenhagen. During the Middle Ages, uh, Eskom Monastery was one of the leading places in northern Zealand, but at the time of the Reformation, the monks were expelled and uh, most of the monastery was torn down. What you see behind me is only uh, a remnant of what it used to be like. And during the summer, there's a big uh, medieval fair here with the uh, 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 mock battles between medieval knights and uh, falconeers and such, which is uh, very nice both for adults and uh, children. The Danite Witness. We find types and foreshadows of a Danite being, being one of the two final great prophets in the construction of the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle and Solomon's Temple. When God commanded Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle, he also appointed two excellent craftsmen filled with the Spirit of God to be in charge of the work. They were Bezalel of the tribe of Judah and Aholiab of the tribe of Dan. We quote from the book of Exodus. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I, behold, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. And in the heart of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded thee, the tabernacle of the congregation, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is thereupon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle." Unquote. Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 2, and verses 6 to 7. When King Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem, the master craftsman, craftsman was Hiram or Huron of the tribe of Dan, whom the Phoenician king of Tyrus, whose name also was Hiram or Huron, sent to Solomon. We quote from Second Chronicles. Then Huron, the king of Tyre, answered in writing, which is sent to Solomon, because the Lord hath loved his people, he hath made thee king over them. Huron said moreover, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that made heaven and earth, who hath given to David the king a wise son, 
endued with prudence and understanding, that might build a house for the Lord, and a house for his kingdom. And now I have sent a cunning man, endued with understanding, of Huram my father's, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful to work in gold and in silver, in brass, in iron, in stone and in timber, in purple, in blue and in fine linen, and in crimson, and to make and to grave any manner of graving, and to find out every device which shall be put to him with thy cunning men, and with the cunning men of my lord David thy father. Unquote. Second Chronicles chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. Now it should be noted that in the book of 1 Kings chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, Hiram's mother is said to be of the tribe of, tribe of Naphtali. Dan and Naphtali were the only sons of Bilhar, and the two tribes were very close. Maybe Hiram's mother was both of Danite and Naphtalite ancestry. The temple was based on the design of the tabernacle, so since the ark and the tabernacle were built by a man of Judah and a man of Dan, and the temple was built by a man of Judah, that would be Solomon, and a man of Dan or Naphtali, that would be Hiram, we can therefore deduct that Hiram was primarily of Dan. But anyway, likewise with the new Christian covenant, which of course was started by and built upon the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ of the tribe of Judah, then the Christian dispensation was started by the Lord Jesus Christ of Judah, and we can therefore also expect that it will be finished uh, by a prophet of the tribe of Dan. Remember that in some of the listings of the 12 tribes in the Old Testament, Testament, Dan was sometimes listed along Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin, that would be in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, and Ezekiel chapter 48, verses 30 to 35, and sometimes not listed at all, that would be in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 3 to chapter 7, verse 40. Likewise, in Revelation, Dan is not listed among the 12 tribes of Israel but is also next to Ephraim. Jacob predicted Dan's special role in the end times. When Jacob Israel blessed his 12 sons, he also predicted what should happen to them in the last days. In other words, it was not just general traits and prophecies about each of the 12 patriarchs and tribes, it was specifically what should befall them in the last days, which we now live in. <clears throat> and we quote, quote from Genesis chapter 49. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together, that I, may, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord, unquote. Genesis chapter 49 verse 1 and verses 16 to 18. Now the faithful Christian overcomers are not just going to be spectators to the rule of Christ over the nations. The faithful Christians are going to rule with Christ and have authority to rule over and judge the nations of the world. That is why they are called, quote unquote, a royal priesthood and holy nation. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. <clears throat> In Revelation, Christ says to John that he will give authority to Christians, just like God the Father gave authority to Christ. We quote, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. Unquote. Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 to 27. And again Christ says that the martyrs will be given thrones and authority to judge. We quote again from Revelation. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment, judgment was given unto them. Unquote. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. The 144,000 God-fearing Israelites of Revelation chapter 7 will, of course, be among the first to receive such authority to rule and judge. But Dan is missing among the 144,000, and therefore Jacob said that, quote, 
Daniel judges people as one of the tribes of Israel, unquote. In other words, Daniel will not judge the same way as the other tribes judge. The other tribes, except Ephraim and Manasseh, judge with 12,000 men. But the tribe of Dan will judge through just one man, one of the two witnesses. Jacob said, quote, Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that, so that his rider shall fall backward, unquote. This means that the Danite witness will fight against the Antichrist, so that the beast empire, the future one world government, will be hesitant in making the Antichrist its ruler. Jacob ended his prophecy with the words, quote, I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord, unquote. This means that Dan's fight against the Antichrist will commence at a time of great distress for the people of God when they have given up all hope of saving themselves through their own strength and only wait for the salvation of the Lord. The Ephraimite witness and Ephraim among the 144,000. The name of Ephraim is missing from the 144,000, but there are 6,000 Ephraimites among the 144,000 because the tribe of Joseph is among the 144,000. We read, quote, Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Unquote. Revelation chapter 7, verse 8. The tribe of Joseph consists, consists of Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and therefore there are 6,000 Ephraimites among the 144,000. When Jacob Israel blessed Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, the custom would have been to give a greater blessing to the firstborn, Manasseh. But instead, Israel gave the greater blessing to Ephraim. We quote from Genesis. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall become great. But truly his younger brother shall become greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Unquote. Genesis chapter 48, verses 13 to 14, and verses 17 to 19. In ancient Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel was sometimes referred to as Ephraim, because the tribe of Ephraim was the leading tribe. Likewise, in the end times, the tribe of Ephraim will be greater than the tribe of Manasseh. In Revelation chapter 7, Manasseh is represented with 18,000 men, because among the 144,000, are both 12,000 of the tribe of Manasseh and 12,000 of the tribe of Joseph. The latter would be 6,000 of Manasseh and 6,000 of Ephraim. If Manasseh is represented with 18,000 men and Ephraim with only 6,000 men, Manasseh would be the greater. But Ephraim, Ephraim is also represented by one of the two witnesses and therefore Ephraim is as great or even greater than Manasseh. Now, since Manasseh is represented by 18,000 men and Ephraim by 6,000 men, we can deduct that the Ephraimite witness is equivalent to 12,000 sealed Israelites. The tribe of Dan is completely missing from the 144,000, which means that the Danite witness is also equivalent to 12,000 sealed, sealed Israelites. The two witnesses will, in other words, be of equally be of equally great importance in the eyes of God, but in different ways. Number five, Messiah ben Joseph in Judaism. That the two final prophets before the coming of the Messiah will be of Dan and Ephraim is a brand new theory to Christians. But to Jews, it is an old and well-known belief. 
There are numerous Jewish writings and commentaries about the so-called Messiah Ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan. They differ in details, but they more or less say as follows. Messiah Ben Joseph, which means Messiah, the son of Joseph, is from the tribe of Ephraim, and he will be assisted by the Prince of Dan. Amilus, the son of Satan, the same whom the Christians call the Antichrist, he will arise and demand to be worshipped as God. The nations of the world will worship, worship Amilus, but Messiah Ben Joseph will refuse. Amilus will, to, mo to no avail, try to kill Messiah Ben Joseph, and a multitude of the lost ten tribes of Israel will gather around him. They will go to Jerusalem and unite with Judah, and Amilus will succeed in killing Messiah Ben Joseph. Later, Messiah Ben David, which is the King Messiah, he will return and resurrect Messiah Ben Joseph, defeat Amilus, and the Messianic era for Israel and the world will begin. According to David C. Mitchell, the author of the authoritative work Messiah Ben Joseph from 2016, the concept of Messiah Ben Joseph goes back several centuries before the Christian era and is not a Jewish reaction to Christianity, which of course identifies Jesus of Nazareth as both the Messiah, son of Joseph, because Joseph was the human stepfather of Jesus, as well as Messiah, son of David, because David was the ancestor of Jesus. Uh, and we have that from uh, David C. Mitchell's book, Messiah and Joseph, page 10. Messiah is an English transliteration of the Hebrew Mashiach, which means the anointed one. When Christians refer to the Messiah, they refer to Christ, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Messiah. But in the original Hebrew Old Testament, many people are actually called Mashiach or Messiah, in English Bibles, it is usually translated anointed one. The people which the Bible calls Messiah include the kings Saul, David, and Jehu, who, uh, uh, Jehu, he was the king of the northern ten tribes of Israel, and all these were obviously a lesser kind of Messiahs than the Lord Jesus, who also was the Son of God, or the Messiah. In Judaism, Messiah ben Joseph is one of these lesser Messiahs, or anointed ones, while Messiah ben David is the ultimate super messiah or king messiah. So now we can see what the Jewish encyclopedia writes about Messiah ben Joseph. We quote from the Jewish encyclopedia. Messiah ben Joseph. Finally, there must be mentioned a messianic figure peculiar to the rabbinical apocalyptic literature, that of Messiah ben Joseph. The earliest mention of him is in Sokoth 52 AB, where three statements occur in regard to him. For the first of which Rabbi Dosa, circa 250, is given as authority. In the last of these statements, only his name is mentioned, but the first two speak of the fate which he, which he is to meet, namely to fall in battle, as if alluding to a well-known tradition. Details about him are not found until much later, but he has an established place in the Apocalypses of later centuries and in the Midrash literature. In Sadia's description of the future, Imunot We Deot, chapter 8, and in that of Haigaon, Tan Sikinim, page 59, according to these, Messiah ben Joseph will appear prior to the coming of Messiah ben David. He will gather the children of Israel around him, march to Jerusalem, and there, after overcoming the hostile powers, re-establish the temple worship and set up his own dominion. Thereupon, Amilus, according to one group of sources, or Gog and Magog, according to the other, will appear with their hosts before Jerusalem, wage war against Messiah ben Joseph and slay him. His corpse, according to one group, will lie unburied in the streets of Jerusalem, According to the other, it will be hidden by the angels with the bodies of the patriarchs, until Messiah ben David comes and resurrects him. When and how this Messiah conception originated is a question that has not yet been answered satisfactorily. It is not possible to, con to consider Messiah ben Joseph the Messiah of the Ten Tribes. He is nowhere represented as such, though twice it is mentioned that a part of the Ten Tribes will be found among those who will gather about his standard." Unquote. 
from the Jewish Encyclopedia's article, Messiah. And then, then we can read what the Chabad Lubavitch writes about Messiah and Joseph. The Chabad Lubavitch is one of the largest Orthodox Jewish organizations. On their website, they write, we quote, Jewish tradition speaks of two redeemers, each one called Mashiach. Both are involved in ushering in the Messianic era. They are Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef. The term Mashiach unqualified always refers to Mashiach ben David, Mashiach the descendant of David of the tribe of Judah. He is the actual or final redeemer who shall rule in the Messianic era. All that was said in our text relates to him. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach, the descendant of Joseph of the tribe of Ephraim, the son of Joseph, is also referred, referred to as Mashiach ben Ephraim, Mashiach, the descendant of Ephraim. He will come first before the final redeemer and later will serve as his viceroy. The essential task of Mashiach ben Yosef is to act as precursor to Mashiach ben David. He will prepare the world for the coming of the final redeemer. Different sources attribute to him different functions, some even charging him with tasks traditionally associated with Mashiach ben David, such as the ingathering of the exiles, the rebuilding of the Bet Hamikdash, and so forth, unquote, from Chabad Lubavitch's article about Mashiach ben Yosef. Yair Davidi on Messiah ben Joseph. Yair Davidi from Jerusalem is an Orthodox Jewish author on of numerous books on the lost ten tribes of Israel. He writes concerning Messiah ben Joseph, we quote, The Messiah, son of Joseph, is a concept in traditional Jewish thought concerning a future leader who precedes the coming of the Messiah, son of David. The Messiah, son of Joseph, according to one school of thought, will head the ten tribes. He will be instrumental in gathering the ten tribes together and begin the process of reconciliation with Judah. And Yair Davidi quotes, our sacred sages had a tradition that in the beginning of the end times there would arise a messiah, <clears throat> i.e. an anointed savior from the house of Joseph, who will reign over the ten tribes. He will wage wars, and all Israel will be gathered together under his banner. This will continue until later on a descendant of David will appear and he will reign over them. A transformation will take place. place. The ten tribes and the stick of Joseph will draw themselves closer onto the stick of Judah, and this too will be through the agency of a prophet and by miracles." Unquote. Source, the commentary of the Malbim on Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. Verse one. Unquote. And we have that from Yair Davidi's book, To Rule the World, page 64. Number 6. Messiah ben Joseph's associate, the Prince of Dan. Messiah ben Joseph of Ephraim will be assisted by the Prince of Dan, according to Rabbi Hillel Rivlin, who lived 1758-1833 in the book Kol Hator. Yair Davidi explains, we quote, The book Kol Hator, i.e. the voice of the turtle dove, which is a reference to Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 12, was written by Rabbi Hillel Rivlin, 1758-1833, of Shklov, a disciple of the Vilna Gaon who lived 1720 to 1797. It deals with the future redemption and the task of the Messiah, son of Joseph, i.e. Moshiach ben Yosef. This Messiah is an anointed leader who precedes the Messiah, son of David, and prepares the way for him. The Messiah, son of Joseph, is associated with the Lost Ten Tribes, as explained by the Malbim on Ezekiel 37 and in articles on this matter. This book is a collection of the sayings of a great and famous Rabbi Eliyahu of Vilna and his followers in the 18th century. The work deals with the Messiah, son of Joseph. Rabbi Eliyahu of Vilna is considered to have been one of the greatest rabbis of all time. Karl Hator says that the Prince of Dan will assist Messiah, son of Joseph. Comment. The Prince of Dan represents the people of Dan. The descendants of Dan are to be found today mainly amongst the people of Denmark and amongst the descendants of the Irish overseas." Unquote. From Yair Davidi's article, The Tasks of Moshiach ben Yosef. In the article, Dan will redeem, 
Jeg er da vidt elaborate on why Dan will help Messiah and Joseph. We quote. Dan will empower the Messiah, son of Joseph. Rabbi Kook from in uh, Igorot 489 said that Dan through Samson represents the aspect of physical strength, sanctified for a higher purpose. Israel will have need of this quality in the end times. Rachel gave Bilhar to Jacob. Dan was born. Genesis chapter 30, verses 3 to 7, and after that, Naphtali, Genesis chapter 30, verse 8. In a sense, by virtue of Rachel giving Bilhah to Jacob and Dan being born, Rachel eventually gave birth to Joseph, Genesis chapter 30, verses 23 to 24. This parallels Dan being connected to the future appearance of the Messiah, son of Joseph. Dan is highly materialistic. That is why Dan is often associated with idolatry. In the future, Dan will use this materialistic streak of his in a positive direction. The Messiah, son of Joseph, represents materialistic liberation and power in defeating the enemies of Israel. Dan and Joseph will supplement each other in enabling the appearance of the Messiah, son of Joseph, and all that is associated with it. Unquote from your Yadavidis article, Dan will redeem. When I was looking into this subject, I asked your Yadavidi about Dan and Messiah Ben Joseph, and your Yadavidi found out that Rabbi Isaiah Halevi Horovitz, who was born circa 1555 in Prague and died 1630 in Safed in Israel, had written the book Shnai Lukot Abrit, which means the two tablets of the law where he quotes the Sohar, which speaks of the heroic deeds which Saria of the tribe of Dan will perform in the wars of Messiah and Joseph. The basic outline of the Sohar was written down circa AD 300, but it only got its final form as we know today circa AD 1200. The Sohar uses the name Messiah and Ephraim, but as we have seen, this means Messiah and Joseph of the tribe of Ephraim. And your Yeridvidi quote from the Sohar. This is Saria who will come to help Messiah son of Ephraim, and he himself is from the tribe of Dan. He is destined to take vengeance in the wars against the other nations. Unquote from the Sohar and unquote from Yadavidi's article, the Messiah son of Ephraim and the tribe of Dan. Until now we have both spoken about Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan. But it should be noted that uh, the belief in Messiah ben Joseph is uh, very common among Jews, at least among Orthodox Jews. It is probably most Orthodox Jews today who believe that the Messiah and Joseph will appear. The belief in the Prince of Dan, on the other hand, is very rare among Orthodox Jews. It is probably very few Jews who believe in uh, the, the Prince of Dan or have even heard about the Prince of Dan. But, uh, on the screen we see a uh, uh, sermon held by Rabbi Shimon Kessen, who is apparently from New York. Uh, it was uploaded to YouTube in June 2023. I'm not sure if that was also when Rabbi Kessen held that sermon, but at least it goes to show that there are Jews who believe both in the coming of the Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan, or M M Mashiach ben Dan, as Rabbi Kessen calls him. Number seven. The two witnesses and Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan are strikingly similar. Now that we have a new understanding of the two witnesses, we can compare them with Judaism's view of Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan and see how strikingly similar they are. Number one. The two witnesses are from Dan and Ephraim. And Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan are from Ephraim and Dan. Number two. The two witnesses will gather 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel. And Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan will gather thousands of the 10 tribes of Israel and unite them with Judah, that is, the, the Jews. <clears throat> Number three. The two witnesses will prophesy against the Antichrist and the beast, and God will protect, protect them. Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan will fight against Amilus, the son of Satan, and God will protect them. Number four, the two witnesses will be killed in Jerusalem by the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, and the dead bodies will lie in the streets. 
Messiah ben Joseph will be killed by Amilus, the son of Satan, or Gog in Jerusalem, and his body will lie in the streets. Number five. The two witnesses will be resurrected three and a half days later by God and taken to heaven. Messiah ben Joseph will be the first to be resurrected by Messiah ben David. Number six. Jesus, the Messiah, son of David, will return with the angels of heaven and the resurrected saints, including the two witnesses, and defeat the beast and the Antichrist and start the millennial kingdom. Messiah ben David will return and resurrect Messiah ben Joseph and defeat Amilus or Gog and start the messianic era. There are so many and so precise similarities between the two witnesses and Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan that they can only have come from one source. The source of the two witnesses is, of course, the God of Israel. Thus, the source of Judaism's Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan must therefore also be the God of Israel. Now, you might be wondering how I came to this conclusion that the two, two witnesses are from Dan and Ephraim. And the answer is that I prayed about it, and this was the answer that I got. I have believed in the Lost Ten Tribes ever since 1993, where I also came to faith in Christ. I was raised in an atheist home, and well, in 1993, I came to faith in God and in Christ, and that uh, the Bible was the Word of God. And uh, whenever I have uh, talked with people about the Lost Ten Tribes, the most common question has been about the Lost Ten Tribes in general, and uh, since I am a Dane and from Denmark, the second most common question has been uh, why uh, the tribe of Dan is missing from the 144,000 Israelites in Revelation. So I have uh, studied this subject a lot and prayed about it, and uh, uh, I got this answer uh, when I uh, prayed about it and studied it a lot uh, approximately a year ago. And then around the same time, I also uh, studied uh, uh, Judaism's view of the uh, Messiah and Joseph, and also found out about his uh, assistant, the Prince of Dan. So I did not uh, come to this conclusion from the study of uh, Judaism's Messiah and Joseph and the Prince of Dan. It was only a confirmation of what I uh, already had uh, gotten from uh, God. Number eight. The Danite and Ephraimite witnesses will redeem Dan and Ephraim from their sins. In the Old Testament, the tribes of Dan and Ephraim were the tribes which were the most sinful of the twelve tribes. The two witnesses from Dan and Ephraim are going to redeem the tribes of Dan and Ephraim from their sins by doing something similar to what the tribes of Dan and Ephraim did in a sinful way, but this time without sinning. Let us take a look at what Dan and Ephraim did wrong in the Old Testament, that will give us an idea about what the two witnesses are going to do to rectify those sins of their ancestors. The Sins of Dan Number 1. When the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, a Danite man, the son of a Danite woman and an Egyptian father, cursed the name of the God of Israel and was put to death for it. We read about that in Leviticus chapter 24, verses 10 to 14. Number two. Samson the Danite is the judge who has the most space devoted to him in the book of Judges. That would be chapters 13 to 16. Samson was chosen by the God of Israel and was a foreshadow of the Lord Jesus Christ in numerous ways. And yet he seems to have lived a life without caring much about the God of Israel. He loved several Philistine women, which God had prohibited Israel from doing, because they would lead them to worship the gods of the Philistines. One of the Philistine women was even a prostitute, and apparently Samson did not think that there was anything wrong in that. Number three. When a part of the tribe of Dan migrated from their original territory between Jerusalem and Gaza, they hired a Levite who lived in Mount Ephraim to be their priest. The Danites brought along the Levite and the idol from his master's house and made this idol their center of worship. We read about that in Judges chapters 17 to 18. And again here we see the connection between the tribe of Dan and 
Ephraim, Mount Ephraim. Number four. When King Jeroboam led ten tribes into seceding from the house of David in Jerusalem, he started a new pagan religion and set up two golden calves, one in Dan and one in Bethel or Bethel in the territory of Ephraim. We read about that in 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 26 to 33. And again here we see Dan and Ephraim together, two golden calves, one in Dan and one in Ephraim. The tribe of Dan started in the true religion of the God of Israel and often fell into idolatry. Samson loved Philistine women, including a prostitute. We can therefore expect that the Danite witness he will start in false religion and go to the true religion of the Lord Jesus Christ. He may also love non-Israelite women, maybe even Philistine or Palestinian women, but in a sinless way. And today the Palestinians, they call themselves uh, in Arabic, Philistines or Philistine, something like that. The sins of Ephraim. The Ephraimite Jeroboam was one of King Solomon's highest ranking men in charge of the northern ten tribes. Jeroboam led the ten tribes into seceding from the house of David in Jerusalem and started a new pagan religion and set up two golden calves one in Dan and one in Bethel, or Bethel, in the territory of Ephraim. Jeroboam was therefore the primary culprit for leading the ten tribes of Israel away from the God of Israel and into idolatry. The ten tribes never repented and were eventually deported out of the land of Israel by the Assyrians. And we read about that in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 6 to 23. Jeroboam's sin was one of the most devastating sins in the Bible, because it led the ten tribes into permanent idolatry and separation from God. Like Jeroboam, Joshua the son of Nun was also an Ephraimite. Joshua was the successor of Moses and led Israel into the Promised Land. We can therefore expect the Ephraimite witness to be a person of some social standing. He will mirror Jeroboam and therefore lead Israel out of false religion and into the true religion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yair Davide writes about how Judaism expects Messiah and Joseph to redeem the sins of Ephraim and of Jeroboam in particular. We quote from Yair Davide's book To Rule the World. The traditional Aramaic translation of the prophets in Targum Yohanan on Exodus chapter 40 verse 11 says the Messiah son of Joseph is descendant from, from Joshua the son of Nun, from the tribe of Ephraim. Other sources say that the Messiah son of Joseph is a descendant of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, that would be in the Sohar Chadash Balak 56b, who was also from the tribe of Ephraim and may too have been a descendant of Joshua the son of Nun. Jeroboam led the northern ten tribes when they rebelled against the house of David and broke away and formed their own kingdom of Israel. We read about that in 1 Kings chapter 12. All the Israelites in the separate kingdom of Israel were later exiled by the Assyrians and became the lost ten tribes of Israel. The Messiah son of Joseph, who, according to this view, is a descendant of Jeroboam, will bring about the reunification of the lost ten tribes, also known as Joseph, with Judah. He will therefore rectify the sin of his ancestor by reuniting with Judah. He will make good what his forefather had done wrong. The majority opinion among, amongst the rabbis who deal with this subject is that the Messiah son of Joseph will come from the tribe of Ephraim, unquote, from Yair Davidi's book, To Rule the World, pages 64 to 65. Similarities and differences between the two witnesses. Jeroboam was of the tribe of Ephraim, and he placed two golden calves, the one in Ephraim and the other in Dan. Now if the Ephraimite witness is going to rectify the sins of Jeroboam, this would indicate that the Ephraimite witness is going to be more prominent than the Danite witness. On the other hand, at the construction of the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle and the Temple of Solomon, it was uh, done with a, an uh, artisan from the tribe of Judah, helped by an artisan from the tribe of Dan. 
On the other hand, the construction of the Ark of the Covenant and of the Tabernacle and of the Temple of Solomon was led by a man of Judah and assisted by a man of Dan. So this would, on the other hand, indicate that the Danite witness would be more prominent than the Ephraimite witness. So we can conclude that the two witnesses of Dan and Ephraim will be equally uh, prominent and important. So in other words, they're not going to be like Moses and Aaron, where Moses was the senior, uh, senior prophet and Aaron was the junior prophet. They're going to be like two Moseses or two Elijahs and two John the Baptists. Example, Simon Peter redeems the tribe of Simeon. To get a better idea of how the two witnesses will redeem the tribes of Dan and Ephraim, let us examine another example of redemption. When Jacob and his family moved into the land of Canaan, a Canaanite prince fell in love with Jacob's daughter Dina, raped her and wanted to marry her. Dina's brothers Simeon and Levi therefore slew the entire Canaanite town with a sword. This act of violence caused Jacob to curse Simeon and Levi in his prophecies to his sons. We read about this in Genesis chapter 49 verses 5 to 7. The tribe of Levi later, later redeemed the sin of their ancestor when a part of Israel rebelled against Moses and the Levites gathered around Moses and slew the sinners with the sword. We read about this in Exodus chapter 32 verses 26 to 27. In the blessings of Moses, this caused Levi to be blessed, but Simeon to be without a blessing, as the only one of the tribes of Israel. And we read about this, or rather don't read about it, in Deuteronomy chapter 33. For the remainder of the Old Testament, the tribe of Simeon remained an obscure tribe which lived in a distant desert territory located within the territory of Judah. Christ chose 12 apostles which represented or may even have been descended from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Judas Iscariot obviously represented the tribe of Judah, that is the Jews, which rejected Christ as we read in the Gospel of John. Quote, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Unquote. John chapter 1 verse 11. Matthew Levi represented Levi. And the greatest of the twelve apostles, Simon Peter, he represented the tribe of Simeon, which was the least esteemed of the twelve tribes in the Old Testament. When the guards from the high priests came to arrest Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, Simon Peter, or Simeon Peter, drew his sword and cut off the ear of one of the guards, much like Simeon of old. Christ, however, told Simon Peter to put his sword into a sheath, this time Simon Peter obeyed the commandment of God and was blessed because of it and became the greatest of the twelve apostles. The two witnesses from Dan and Ephraim will redeem the sins of their tribes in somewhat the same way as Simon Peter redeemed the sins of the tribe of Simeon. Number nine. The two witnesses will cause a mass conversion of Jews. When the two witnesses become known to the world, they will both according to Christianity and according to Judaism be believed in by God-fearing Israelites of all twelve tribes, both of the lost ten tribes and of the Jews. In other words, both Israelites of the lost ten tribes and of the Jews will believe what these two prophets will say. These two prophets will say that they are not the Messiah, but that the Messiah is coming soon, and that his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that he is the Son of God. This will cause a mass conversion of both the Israelites of the Lost Ten Tribes, as well as of the people of all the nations of the world. But uh, Jews, they will either have to believe in uh, Messiah ben Joseph and what he says, and he's going to say that Yeshua of Nazareth, that he is the Messiah and he is the Son of God. Or the Jews will have to reject Messiah ben Joseph. So this, this is going to cause a mass conversion of Jews. Number 10. Where are Dan and Ephraim today? After the Assyrians invaded and deported the Lost Ten Tribes of uh, Israel approximately 721 BC, the Lost Ten Tribes, including Dan and Ephraim, migrated to northwestern Europe, 
where they became the nucleus of the nations of Northwestern Europe. And this is believed in today by thousands, both of the Christians as well as Messianic Jews and Orthodox Jews. Among people who study the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel, there is a consensus that the tribe of Dan is found primarily in the Kingdom of Denmark and in the Republic of Ireland, and possibly in parts of the United Kingdom, especially Scotland. Also, in the United States, there are approximately 36 million uh, Americans of uh, Irish descent and something like 1.3 million Americans of Danish descent. So this could mean that the number of people with a Danite or partial Danite descent could be as high as 50 million people. There is also a consensus that the tribe of Ephraim is found primarily in the United Kingdom and in its daughter nations across the world, including Canada, with the notable exception of Quebec, which is French and primarily of the tribe of Reuben, as well as in Australia, New Zealand, and among the English-speaking South Africans, and of course their descendants across the world. The notable exception is the United States, which primarily is of the tribe of Manasseh, so that the United States is predominantly not Ephraim. So this could mean that the number of people with Ephraimite or partial Ephraimite ancestry could be as high as 100 million people. The two witnesses of Revelation, also known as Messiah ben Joseph and the Prince of Dan, are likely to come from these areas.